Hey guys, Les is more back with another video. Uh, it's been a little while since I put any content out. Uh, I just got done playing a session. It's pretty late here. Um, and so I was just in the middle of a study session after my playing session, which is when I do most of my studying. Um, and yeah, I was just going over some small blind versus button three up pot stuff. Uh, I, I sort of noticed during the session there were a few spots where I was having issues um, playing the flop. Well, not issues, but more just like curiosity about frequencies. Um, not to mention I had, a, I had a friend request this topic, so it, it was sort of already in the back of my mind. Um, so I thought it would be good to, to make a video on this. Um, so first we're just going to talk about C batting out of position on the flop. And what we're going to see is uh, almost strictly small betting. We're, we're going to see some sizing up to half pot on a select few boards like jack high, queen high boards, and then like um, this drier ace high board. We're, we're going to size up, and we have like this ace king size on like ace nine six um but on most other boards it's it's going to be lots and lots of 10 percent betting and checking you can see on like king jack 10 that smashes our range we're just gonna bet 10 percent of the pot with our entire range um we just have so many strong hands on this board straight sets two pairs um but the thing about this board is is the board blocks a lot of our flushes. So generally why we see um, lots of small betting on monotone boards is, is two things. Um, first thing is that when you have a flush, you, you block the stack off range, uh, villain stack off range. So if, if you have two, two spades in your hand on this board, um, it's very unlikely that, that your opponent has um, two worse spades to to stack off with. Um, the other thing is that there's lots of turns and rivers that will end up killing your value hand. So if you have if you have a set or or two pair on this board, um, you don't want to just blindly pile money in on on earlier streets because of you know scare cards or whatever. That that's not how no limit hold'em works. Um, on many on many wet textures, you're, you're going to wait for safe turns and rivers to, to put large amounts of money in. Um, and you'll see this on, on all sorts of, of wet textures uh, at higher SPRs. Um, but th this this board is, is a very prime example. Uh, it's very connected, very dynamic, monotone board. Um, you know, you're if you have if you have a hand like ace king or or a set or two pair on this board you're you're dodging like half the deck uh, as far as like being able to value about the next street um and yeah a lot of your value hands just don't retain valor very well meaning your like your ability to value about later streets goes down um so yeah you you're generally going to be waiting for uh, safe cards on turns and rivers to, to put any sizable bets and you can see after like the low break you'll um, you know have some sizing up to uh, what is this three quarters pot on the turn um, but still lots of 10% in small betting uh, okay and then so so let's take a look at overall betting frequency Four three deuce. Um, that's that's just a board we're at gonna be, you know, at the uh, lowest advantage. You know, generally on every board texture, the the three better is gonna have some sort of advantage in terms of equity, um, especially in the small line versus button configuration. But um, yeah, on these on, on these real low connected boards, uh, the the out of position player will not be doing nearly as well. On this board specifically, uh, six five 
is a straight, uh, ace five is a straight, fours, threes, deuces all kill uh, over pairs. Um, so this is certainly not a board you're going to want to be piling money in with an over pair. Um, so you're generally going to be doing lots of lots of checking. Um, let's see. It's the the overall uh, betting frequency is going to average out uh, average out to around seventy five percent. Um, and then yeah, the highest frequency bet boards are going to be this these king high boards. Um, that doesn't change like these these you can just uh, range about these king high mono boards for for a tenth of the pot um, out of position here. It seems like. Seems pretty good. Uh, and then, like, king, queen, six, king, nine, seven, splitting into, like, this quarter pot size. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and then, then these, the, these jack high boards play a bit differently. Um, it, you, you're going to start to size up, like, on, on here, we can sort by the, this half pot size. So, on, like, jack six, four, jack nine, four, jack seven, three, uh, you, you're going to start to split into this half pot size. Um, and if you look at if you look at other uh, small blind versus button three bet pot databases, and you look at these drier jack high textures, you're, you're going to see a similar. You're, you're going to see lots of half potting, like these jack high boards. It, the jack is the rank um, that out of position out of position still hits pretty well as far as like having the offsuit variety, like, you know, out of position is going to have, like, some king jack off and ace jack offsuit. Um, so lots of top pair. Uh, but a jack is pretty vulnerable. So, like, uh, a similar thing goes for a 10, but not as much not as much offsuit 10x um, in this configuration. But but these jack high boards are, are kind of the sweet spot for, like, having lots of top pair and the, the top rank the jack being being vulnerable, uh, incentivizing out of position uh, to put in some bigger bets. So, sort of makes sense why these jack high boards tend to, you know, this this slightly larger size. Uh, okay, let's see. As far as let's take a look at ace high boards. Ace high boards are always um, a bit tricky. So ace queen three, lots of checking. So it looks like the the pattern throughout the database is going to be uh, taking into account how many two pairs and sets the other player has. So yeah, okay. What sticks out to me right now is the difference between this ace eight five and this ace seven five. You can see like there's a drastic difference in um, betting frequencies. So if I had to guess, it would be the button having much more ace eight suited and than ace seven suited. Um, so if we look at ace eight five, we can see let's see out of position um, has about just over two percent two pair um, not to mention the the small blind doesn't have much five five so two percent uh, two pair and then in position has like four uh, percent but notice how little a seven in position has and then um, on the a seven five We have slightly more two pair on this board actually, um, because we have ace five and ace seven at a higher frequency than ace eight. Um, and then here we see like this ace seven and ace eight is is inverted as far as frequencies go for for in position. So it's it's just gonna be just gonna be how it works out there. Um, yes, yeah, so that's sort of a brief synopsis on on that 
Um, the, yeah, so lots of 10% bedding on some of these wetter king high boards. Uh, you can size up to a quarter, and then these jack high boards, you can you can split into really every size uh, less than or equal to half pot. Um, and generally, you base your bedding frequency on how many hands in position has that outdraws your over pairs or strong top pair. Um, okay. So facing a check, in position is going to be doing lots lots of small betting. That's that's um, not much different from most spots. Uh, but as you know, like on the on the higher boards, well if you if you've studied this spot, um, generally on other textures, in position is going to be betting smaller on lower boards because the the out of position player is uh, very high card heavy. So on the lower boards, you, you just have incentive to bet small to deny equity from those high card hands. And then on the higher boards, uh, say on like king queen six is a good example. Say you're, you're the the boards like, um, well, I mean that would be a range check. Say it was like ace, yeah, ace high boards like a seven five, uh, rainbow, and you like face a check. You're generally going to be using like a half pot size because when you bet a seven five. Uh, you're saying you have top pair. So, like, you're not betting for equity denial. Um, so, more or less. So, like, the the objective of your bet is just much different on the height of the top rank. Okay. Uh, yeah, and, and that's, that's going to hold true here. So, once you get up to, like... It's generally double Broadway boards and then ace high boards. So like king queen six, king jack ten, and then the rest of the ace high boards are just going to be um, are, are going to start sizing up to half pot. So I just I just like uh, you know bet small on these on these queen high and lower boards, and then once you get up to like king high and ace high, you you can start to size up to like a third of the pot. Uh, seems seems very reasonable. Because uh, a, a lot of these boards are, are like almost equally splitting between the two sizes. Okay. Now facing this ten percent pot bet, you can see the overall raising frequency is just over fourteen. There's going to be, yeah, obviously a lot of calling, not much folding. Um, So the boards we do the most folding on is, are going to be these higher boards, uh, obviously, because we're, we're going to, like, on a board like Jack 7-3, a hand like Pocket 5s is going to be much easier to continue versus a 10% pot, pot bet than that, that same hand on Ace-9-6 or Ace-Queen-3 or King-Jack-10. Um, so it's, yeah, this is sort of where this folding frequency is coming from. Um, yeah, and, and these, well, these boards just interact with uh, the out of position range much, much better. And uh, we, we just have to end up overfolding those textures as the in position player. <clears throat> yeah, you can see the boards where in position has the lowest equity are going to be the boards where we where we fold the most. Again, this is just um, the inverse relationship between the range equity and the continue frequency. So uh, nothing shocking here, but yeah. Um, so facing this ten percent pot, pot bet, we're going to be raising small, uh, and then. Yeah, like I said earlier, the, the hands we have incentive to raise, like, like if, if you have a flush, you don't want to raise big because, like, you have two spades in your hand. It's going to be hard to, to get the money in against um, a worse, worse flush if you have a flush. Uh, that, that's just sort of how monotone boards function. And then... 
yeah, the the overall valor of your your value hands is just going to go, you know, go down significantly on monotone boards. Not much incentive to raise small or to raise big. I mean, uh, you'd rather just raise small and then evaluate turns and rivers in position. Seems pretty nice. So we can take a look at range construction here. Um, take a look at ace queen three first. So we face a 10% pot bet. Um, yeah, we're raising a little bit of two pair. Ace queen, bit of ace three. But it's mostly gonna be sets, it looks like. Like three three, five four for the gut shots. Um, the occasional pocket pair, not much. Like mo our, our raising is going to be mainly centered around some ace queen and then sets. Uh, let's take a look at some other boards. Maybe king jack ten. Yeah, we're we're not even like raising straights at a very high frequency on these boards. Um, Yeah, so I thought this Ace Nine Six board was a bit bit peculiar. It's kind of funny. Um, so facing facing this ten percent pot bet, remember how high card heavy the out of position player is. Instead of raising a hand like Ace Jack, you'd much rather raise a hand like like Nine Eight Nine Eight. Um, so notice that like nine eights equity is like you know around a third, um, but if you raise, you can like fold out all of these over cards. So it's the reason like ten nine is is just pure calling, and nine eight is like um, raising quite frequently. You're gonna see a similar thing going on with six five. Uh, and seven six not raising much, but six five raising much more often. Um, nine eight just doesn't need nearly as much protection as ten nine. Uh, so you can just like deny a bunch of equity by raising small. Um, you can actually get called by worse, as far as like getting called by eights and sevens, uh, seven six six five, and then fold out some over pairs, without without a spade. Uh, and and some shit top here. Uh, but notice that, yeah, we're not raising much top here. Um, and it, it, I think I think this is a, a good example of a board that's gonna play pretty differently in game. I think I think people are gonna have, uh, you know, ace queen here and do, like, mostly raising. Um, yeah, I think I think they're gonna they're gonna raise that sort of hand much more frequently than they should. I, I think the main takeaway um, of playing in position, facing facing this 10% pot bet, is going to be, you know, mostly calling these one pair hands, and then, uh, you know, if you have these middling pairs, you can start to raise those. Let, let's see, like, on these lower textures. Um, on 6-4-3, facing a small bet. Yeah, we're gonna raise some 6-5-5-4. Uh, you know some some gut shot bluffs, but uh, generally doing a lot of floating, like even queen ten high, jack nine high, jack ten high, um, ten nine. So the the, the reason you would uh, fold jack ten as opposed to float ten nine is you you have to think about your your pair outs. Because when you float this this ten percent pot bet, you, you want your like if, if you make a pair on a later street, it'd be ideal to be able to value bet. Um, but if not, you don't want to to get coolered by a better pair from out of position. So like if um, like like out of position is gonna have like all the ace jack off suit, uh, king jack off, um, but they're not gonna have like ace nine off and king nine off. So then if you make a nine with 10 nine on a later street, it's gonna be much stronger than 
a 10 with jack 10 because you just get out kicked more often uh, so your pair outs are stronger similar thing going on with like like queen 10 and even king 10 starting to fold a bit um, not to mention 10-9 uh, has a backdoor straight draw but th this is just such such a clear argument for for floating 10-9 as opposed to jack 10 like you, you're uh your, yeah, your pair outs are just like not not very good. If you hit a pair, you're you're just get, getting out kicked a lot. Um, okay. Now on four three deuce. So this is a board that remember imposition is gonna do the best on out of this entire database. Um, so the overall frequency is going to go up. So we're going to start to bet these middle link pairs more often. Um, a lot of these high card hands with the spade more frequently. Um, remember the ace high hands have a gut shot on this board, so they're they're going to end up betting slightly more often than you would think, um, as opposed to this middle link junk. But yeah, like some of this ace jack, ace ten stuff is going to show down, try to show down. Uh, or hit a pair on a later street. Um, yeah, you can see, like, yeah, I think this is a pretty good demonstration of, of how Valor works on these monotone boards. A hand as strong as Ace-5 is, is just mostly checking back the flop. So, you know, something, something to consider. 6-5 mostly or well about half and half checking back the flop without the but you know that's not the street flush um, okay uh, and I've two because I, I wanted to put an em emphasis on on the lower boards um, so I, I had these two boards run so I have nine five deuce mono um, yeah so like on these um, middling very disconnected boards where over pairs are going to retain slightly more valor uh, you're going to start to see some sizing up to a quarter so like on this very very dry disconnected board aside from the the monotone texture um, the over pairs are going to be able to to size up uh, it's like it's uh there's lots of gut shots but um there's no real high equity draws. Um, so yeah, there, there, there's no turns that just like absolutely kill your hand um, with an over pair aside from from a spade. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, so sort of the tech, the the range construction here is like. Betting the lower over pair slightly more often. Betting slightly more often with a spade. Same goes for aces. Um, yeah, betting everything around mid high frequency. And then these offsuit hands are going to be betting mostly with a spade. Uh, King Queen with a slightly stronger pair draw is going to going to bet a bit more often. Um, not to mention that King Queen blocks Queen. So well blocks King Nine suited. Let's see. Eh, doesn't seem to be too discernible. Uh, thought king queen might do some more betting without the spade because you block 9x suited doesn't really seem to be the case I think it, it's probably just because your pair outs are a bit stronger it's like if you bet a jack and hit a jack like you can still get cooler by jack 9 but in position doesn't have queen 9 suited but they have all the king nine and jack nine suited, so. Okay. Um, 
and then facing a track again, we see the same thing going on around mid frequency for a small size. And then I have one more. I have eight, seven, five. So this is like a more connected texture. Um, so you can see like your size is getting pushed back down because of the, the, connected, te the connected dynamic texture. Um, so remember on the 9.5 deuce, we're betting slightly larger with our over pairs because they can, they can retain their valor a bit better. Whereas on this texture, a 4, 6, or a 9 is going to bring a 1-liner, whereas on the other board there's, there's like no 4-liners. Um, the only straight draws that complete were gut shots. So this board's just going to play much differently in the sense that you're, you're going to wait till later streets to, to put in much money with your over pairs. Um, so yeah, very small, 10% size, lots of checking. Because uh, you have to you have to consider like imposition kind of smashes this board. Uh, you're gonna have like all the sets and eight seven, and then a, a bunch of like high equity got uh, like open enders and, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, on this board, raising really reserved for sets. About it really, um, five sevens eights. You're just like re, uh, raising these gut shots. You know these overs with a gut shot. Um, nine eight calling as, and then like like jack nine king nine ace nine raising a good bit. Uh, okay. So that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to cover today. If you guys have any questions, leave or, or s suggestions for video material, leave uh, leave a comment down below. And thanks for watching.